world. Damn thing changed. I am so Thank you for joining us for episode 56. <laughs> Part two. Part two, yeah. Uh, I know you're wondering why am I saying part two? Why are we <laughs> laughing so much? <laughs> you know, Mercury is retrograde. And it's hitting us. <laughs> and um, we started recording an episode, got about... Half 30, an hour. 35 minutes into it, and I re- I realized I never pushed record. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no one uh, is safe. Even astrologers are not safe from Mercury <laughs> retrograde. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to try to knock this out again. Uh, <laughs> all right. And so, let's, just talk, let's just talk real quick about how Mercury retrograde has impacted your life up until this point, of course. Well, you know what? It, be honest with you, it actually has been messing with me. I am Mercury uh, in my chart because you I am Gemini. Uh, Gemini rising. So uh, Mercury rules that. And I went. Well, it's your fault. You're, you're taking the blame for this. Right? Oh, yeah, it's all me. I went to, <laughs> and look. I went to go get something to eat before we started this, and uh, I went to Subway. And you know how they make your sandwich and all that. And mm-hmm. I went to I went to pay, and you know how they got the pay to pay, you know you could just tap to pay. Tap to pay. Uh huh. Well, I went to tap to pay, and whatever I hit, it tipped them whatever the highest thing and I was like oh man <laughs> and oh, the, lady no. looked at, hey, the l- lady looked at me and was like Merry Christmas I was like Merry Christmas I got outside I said I see why she was saying Merry Christmas <laughs> man. <laughs> man I tipped her five something dollars on my sandwich dang <laughs> <laughs> Mercury retrograde nice and then I come, I come to the house I eat try to try to do this with you and then we get halfway in, and then you realize, hey, Paul, yeah. you never push record. <laughs> yeah, hey, I don't mean to interrupt or anything. So we're really on a roll here, but like, are we recording? <laughs> <laughs> well, the yeah. answer to that question was no. No. <laughs> and we had like a real good thing going too. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's try this again. Um, today is the winter solstice um yes today is the day that the sun dies or stops moving for three days um this is also a day of people rushing out to buy last minute Christmas gifts and what not <laughs> and yeah oh my god hey uh, i'll tell you how mercury retrograde has affected me i have a flat tire right now and apparently i was driving on it for like at least a day before i noticed it was flat wow. i thought like the alignment was off or something i was like hey my tire like my wheels like it was rolling in the rain we had some rain and I, it wasn't like catching at the stop sign i thought something you know like Something else was wrong, and then he goes out and checks my car. The like last night, he's like, "Your tire is completely flat, like on the ground, on the rim now." And Gemini, Mer- or I guess Mercury, not Gemini, it's in Sagittarius. Mer- yeah. Capricorn right now just left Sagittarius, but it uh, and it's heading and it's heading back there. It it's was heading back to Sagittarius, back. Yeah, yeah. And Mercury is you know short distance travel. <laughs> and yours, yours was put a uh, put a damper on your uh, yeah. short distance travel. I never go anywhere, and like the few places I do go are like less than five miles away usually. So I'm like, what the hell happened to my tire? I'm still, yeah. <laughs> hmm. All right, all right. Well, you know, December 25th. This time has been celebrated for eons uh and it's been celebrated before 
you know, the most famous birth. Why? Why is this day be celebrated? I tell you, it's all astrological. Right? Yes. Um, what, um, what is the solstice? What is the equinox? What is it really about? It's about light and darkness. Which, back in those days, light and darkness is equivalent to life and death. Survival. Um, survival. Yes, yes. Uh, and so, knowing the movement of things, um, uh, could give you an advantage to, you know, stay alive. Knowing it was about to get cold. Yeah. Being prepared for the fall of the sun. It's been falling since fall. (laughs) Correct. Now we're in darkness. Correct. And so what is the solstice actually? And, um, Throughout the year, the sun moves one degree. Let us just say, the, if we looking at the equator, the sun moves down the equator one degree a day. And on December 22nd, around December 22nd, when the sun reaches zero degrees Capricorn, or the winter solstice, the sun stops moving south or stops moving, or in other words, dies for three days. Yeah. This- Before we were rudely interrupted by not recording, I mentioned that is that kind of like the sun being retrograde? Yes, even or though, even though, being yeah. at a standstill. Yeah, and even though uh, what is retrograde, it's it's when the uh, planet appear to be moving backwards, but physically isn't. They physically are not, but it appears to us that they yes. are. But in this in this instance, the sun does actually, I guess, you know, appear to be uh, moving uh, in a other direction be honest with you i could tell uh from where i live because um what the the way the house is positioned um on this part of the year there's more sunlight in the backyard Mm. and then you know it's gonna go back to the front yard so uh it's kind of like i'm on the line a little bit (laughs) Okay, so you must have like a east or west facing house, right? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know whichever face it is. I it, I could gradually see how. Matter of fact, I t- had to, I took my plants from the front that was in the front and moved them more to the back so they could get more sunlight because the sun oh, wow. was coming up more that way, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all of all of this happens on the Southern Cross or Crooks. What is the Southern Cross? Uh, if you look up and you see, you find the big dip, the Little Dipper, right? They will have four stars around that Little Dipper, right? Mm-hmm. That is the Southern Cross. Uh, do you know the con- what constellation the Southern Cross is found in, D? I think it's a swan, right? No, it's in a constellation. One, one of the zodiac. Oh, it's in kind. one of the zodiac constellations. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to embarrass myself. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, would it surprise you if I told you that it's at the legs of under the under the legs of Virgo? A Virgo? Oh, okay. Yes. So is it like a cross? Virgo to Pisces, or is it just on no, the no, no, the no? I'm saying the Southern Cross is right up underneath by the leg of Virgo, the constellation. 
Okay. That's how people can find it. If you want to find it, look up Fine Virgo and then look under her leg and you'll find the Southern Cross. That's interesting since Virgo is like the purest. Well, what is Virgo's sign? Virgo the what? The virgin. Oh. Oh. But hold that thought. Virgo the virgin, huh? Mm hmm. Mm. And this on this 25th when the and, uh, during this time um when the sun dies for three days or stops moving you can see the three according to the story they have three kings oh right? yeah right? an orange belt right yes and all of and this could be seen in the night sky. Uh, wait, before I go there, I wanted to go back. Uh, on December 25th, the sun begins moving again, but at, at this time, from from the south to the north, bringing sh- shorter, going from shorter, colder days to the north, which is longer, warmer days. This right. process is a six month process from solstice to solstice. Light officially overtakes darkness at the spring equinox, while darkness overtakes light at the fall equinox. Yeah, because it's even, even amounts of day and even amounts of night. Yes, and so, but at that point, the, the sun starts falling away and we start getting less and less and less right. light until the sun, you know, pretty much stops moving, yeah. you know, until, until back, actually until the spring equinox, because at that point, Hey, by the way, do you know, there's a religion that celebrates something? We all, there's all these religions that celebrate something at, mm-hmm. at this, at the equinox, like the, especially the spring equinox, you know, yeah. um, isn't it called like Maben or something like well, that? Well, well, in um, Jewish in Jewish culture, it is the it it's the um, Passover, Passover, Passover. Passover. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we have Christ- Easter around that time yeah, too. Yeah, I was about to say in Christian culture, it would be Easter. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Muslim, I think. Oh no, it's uh, it's Ostara that I was thinking of. The pagans have Ostara, and then uh, uh, the Muslim would be, um, I think it's Ramadan. Um, isn't that at set like at different times of year? Um, at the beginning of the year, I think it's at the first full moon or something like that. Uh, oh, okay. but but it's pretty much you know, um around the same time, right? Okay. So what is the star to the east? The star to the east to the east is actually Sirius, which is the brightest star in the night sky. Um now on Christmas Eve, Sirius will align with the three brightest stars in Orion's belt or like most commonly known, the three kings. Sirius and the three kings will point exactly where the sun will rise on Christmas morning. Hey, by the way, D, um, you know how I said the Southern Cross is in under the leg of Virgo? Yeah. And you said Virgo is the what? Virgin. Have you ever heard born of a virgin? Born of a virgin, yeah, with Mary. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, ouch. I like that. Ouch. It's ouch. What's happening in the sky? Oh, oh, so am I telling am I kind of trying to tell you that you know all of this stuff is really Yeah, like logical? Jesus died on the cross. Also, Jesus died on the cross. And he rose three How- days. And then the Son of God returned after three days. Mm, yeah. 
Now, let me ask you this. Why do you think the sun is the giver of life? Mm, I don't know. It's hot. I don't know where you're it like. Does. It does. her like we were talking earlier. Darkness. Darkness is death. cold. And cold and okay. death. And, you know, you could get eaten up by predators and stuff right. in the heat and uh, in the coldness warm. of the night. Yeah. Snuck up on and all of that. And if you didn't have any fire or, by the way, if there is no sunlight, you know, won't what won't grow? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> very few things like I think there's a few plants that I don't know that they do grow in darkness but I like I don't know potatoes but still even they grow to the surface toward the light I don't know what I'm talking about I'm just gonna be quiet <laughs> hey but I, there is something that I do find interesting um if we had 24 hours of sunlight, you know what would happen? Uh, don't they have this in like Alaska? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what would happen. We would die. 24 hours of sunlight? Yeah. And if we had 24 hours of darkness, we, you know what would happen? I guess we would die. Yeah. So what's I that think, mean? I think they do have this like in Alaska and certain parts yeah, of... But- but really, how it really works? Like if we didn't have modern technology? No, I'm just saying. Think about it. Why did if twenty if if it never got dark? This is what I'm saying. If it never got dark, we would all die. Okay, because you could burn to death too, right? Yeah. That nothing, going? nothing to grow. Yeah, it, die be, on a vine. Everything would be yeah. Everything would burn and, to death. And if we had 24 hours of darkness, we would die. Because yeah, nothing would grow. And we would freeze to death. Mm-hmm. Everything would be ice. So what does that actually mean? We need balance? Correct. <laughs> Correct. We need both. So, so now here's the question, D. If, if we need if we need 12 hours of darkness and 12 hours of light is darkness bad or negative hmm. it is the yin to the sun's yang is the only way I could answer that <laughs> like it's not bad but it is the negative like, like when you develop pictures like you have a negative I guess in the old timey days, you would have a negative and then you would develop the positive at the photo, usually Walgreens or whatever, CVS, right? Yeah. Like, is that negative photo negative? Like, is it bad? But no, but it's negative. Well, if you don't have the negative, will you get the photo? No, you won't get it. Hmm. So I guess you need the darkness. Yeah, you need it. So why are people scared of it then? If that's what you need. I think people are afraid of their own darkness, their own shadows. I think that's what it's more about. Back to light and darkness. Mm-hmm. Because in light, you know, there's not, you don't see mm-hmm. a lot of shadows. You got to bring the darkness into the light. It's not so scary there. You know, I do have a, I've said, you know, when you give someone, when you show someone darkness, you actually, or when you show someone their, their shadow, Mm -hmm. you actually give them the light. Yeah. It gives them the courage to face their own, to see you facing your own. When you walk in a house and there's no lights on, what's the first thing you do? Turn on the light. I'm clumsy. I'll trip over everything. <laughs> well, I mean, that's why you turn on the light so you can see. Yeah. <laughs> or, or 
illuminate, illuminate the darkness. Yes. Now, does it take illumination for you to uh, lift yourself out of darkness? Yeah. Yeah, it does, because you can't lift yourself out if you don't know where you're going. Back to... You have to shine a light on it to see what you're dealing with to get out. Aha. Which points to the sun being Kazemi with Mercury today. Mm -hmm. Kazemi, boys and girls, means in the heart of the sun. So we've got the winter solstice and the sun at zero degrees Capricorn and Mercury at zero degrees Capricorn. Correct. All in one day. Correct. So and Mercury is retrograde. Retrograde. So uh, retrograde. What does it mean? Review. Um, you know, rewind. Self reflect. Do the inner work. Reflect all the R words that you could think of. Yeah. <laughs> Redo, renew, reuse, reduce, recycle. Just kidding. Mm. <laughs> but um, I guess recycle things in your mind. Yeah. I was joking, but yeah, you've got to re, like, go over. You got to watch your um, your footage, you know, replay your footage, redo, recycle. You got to go through it to analyze and move forward. And moving forward, which would point to Capricorn. Capricorn is the mountain goat. Mountain goats like to climb mountain, mountains. So I would ask, hey, which mountain are you climbing? A mountain would be a goal. What goal are you currently working on? Or are you just lost in a valley? Yeah. Are you seeing your future career or path clearly or are you being delusional about it yeah all of this is at, at, all of this goes on while we still in the throes or aftermath of the Venus Uranus opposition um, from Scorpio to Taurus, right? Um, mm-hmm. Taurus Uranus is up there shaking up people's value systems. Um, uh, their Thanks. money, um, your bank account, you know, uh, shifts, and and Uranus also. If I want to go the spiritual, spiritual route. Uranus points to unconscious soul trauma that you've been dealing with for lifetimes. And when it comes to the opposition of to Venus, right? Um, and Venus and Scorpio at that, which is in detriment, right? Yeah, you're right. I think so. So what what value systems, what programs have you been holding yourself to that in the end is actually detrimental to the goals and paths that you clearly want to work toward? Right. Are you working on what you value or are you doing it because of someone else yeah and Uranus is going to bring some shocking changes to the way that you deal with it going forward correct hence the solstice hence the sun being Kazemi with Mercury in Saturn sign Capricorn you know and actually, this is sextile to tr- to Saturn in Pisces because it's happening at the early degrees, Earth to water. Earth to water, yeah. So, 
Uranus would be sextile to Saturn in Pisces, and Venus would be trine because they're both water. No, I'm talking. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the the Kazim, the, uh, the Sun and Mercury oh. are oh. sextile there. Saturn. That and <laughs> because the reason I brought that up is because they're in Saturn sign. Right. Okay. I follow you now. <laughs> yeah. They're in Saturn sign. So Saturn over there in Pisces has to do has something to say about this um meeting of the sun and Mercury. Okay, yeah. All right. So Saturn in Pisces is gonna be more like dissolving boundaries, limitations. Ooh, ooh, I like where you put good what there, D. Is it dissolving boundaries or could it be people need some people may Need to put boundaries up. Yeah. Pisces does not like to put boundaries up, but they are probably the people that need to do it the most. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? Because they're they are so don't, wait, don't you don't you have Pisces energy? I'm a Pisces, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, oh, so you talking from experience? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So this is not you just pontificating. You're talking from no. a note. Yeah, like that's and I have a I have a bunch of planets in Capricorn too. So like those planets demand that I have structure okay. boundaries and Pisces. Okay, like, I'm glad you said. It. Now I have a question for you since you yeah you reminded me you you do have a stellium in Capricorn. Yeah, like and five. You do planets. have and you do have some Pi you a Pisces with the so D. <laughs> How could, how do you think Capricorn and Pisces can work together? What's the best way you uh, think that, that those two energies can work together? I feel like Capricorn really establishes like a foundation and a structure for, you know, like bringing Pisces out of the, you know, otherworldly, dreamy, fantasy ideals and like smacks them with harsh reality. So it's kind of... It's kind of like a yin and a yang almost where Pisces wants to dissolve all boundaries and be one and be together and just live in happiness and all these ideals. Whereas Capricorn is like, no, harsh reality. This is what we're dealing with. Let's be realistic. Like brings them down to earth. Now I have a question for you. Did that really come home, hit home from you when you became a business owner? Yeah. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I mean, every, like, every level of my life is, like, it's a new lesson in this. So, but yeah, definitely with the career, with the business, you know, managing employees, managing stock, managing emails, spreadsheets, oh, all, everything. <laughs> so, let me ask you this then. Has it been a challenge for you to um, embrace the business and structure that you had to do to be do, do to be success, have a successful business you, in it but I also know that Pisces likes to escape so are you finding the challenge of still staying structured and organized but also having an escape hatch the business does not really let me escape <laughs> like I want to I guess but there's no like you're I'm in it I'm in it and there's no way out so I have to deal with it I have to deal with it all like well it's hard. <laughs> well, is, well is that where putting up boundaries may come in yeah I've had to put up boundaries and it's not fun at least it's not for me. I mean, some people it's easy and they like so, doing. So, so when you say boundaries, when it comes to, is it, hey, I'm doing this while I'm, I'm at work, but when I'm at work, I need to shut it off. Yeah, um, I'm not as good about that because, like, we don't have an office at the business. We have a home office. All like, right. there's like it's such a small space that there's just no space for an office. So. I take work home with me a lot. 
like we both do and like i it's also like i own it with my partner with my marriage partner you know so like i don't know we that that's a struggle that's a struggle <laughs> i'll just leave well, it at that well, well <laughs> I, I, and the reason i'm asking because you know that's pretty much the energy we in you know uh this this kazimi yeah the sun kazimi uh the sun at zero degrees capricorn Wallace, you know, sextile to Saturn over there in Pisces. Yeah, yeah. it's and a so, struggle. I mean, there is certain times where I'll be like, let's just not talk about this right now. Like, I don't want to talk about work anymore. <laughs> like, we're done. That's the end. <laughs> well, but I guess that, that's a boundary, right? Like, I'm done for now. Like, that's it. Right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, I, maybe I've gotten to that point because I went past my boundary, though. And that's when I have to like, okay, everyone shut up about work. I'm not talking about work anymore. So, so in all actuality, do you, all your life in some sort of way, you've been learning, having to put up boundaries and now you're learning to put up like earlier, you had to learn to put up boundaries with inside your family. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere. And now. <laughs> it's hard. Like wherever you like, whatever level of your or not level of your life, whatever category of your life, whatever, you know, home or work or friends or so whatever, like it's hard. It's hard to put up boundaries. It just is. And I feel like that's how I act in most of them. Like I let them push me past my boundaries and then I like get really mad and I have to like really dig my heels in and demand that like these are my boundaries. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So maybe um, when it comes to this this energy and all of that, it's about uh, a proper boundaries. Uh, learning, but... like learning to set it sooner and stick with it. How do you feel about this this comment? This you have to train people how you want to be treated. Uh, I don't know. I feel like there is some truth to that, but I think that also, like, people just fucking suck, you know? <laughs> like, you teach them how you want to be treated all you want, but that doesn't mean they're going to do it, you know? Yeah, but then at that point, that would be on you. Then you set a boundary and, like, okay, if they're not going to treat me how I want to be treated, then I don't want to be around them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's hard when that person is like your family or I guess your boss or an employee or whatever. <laughs> um, other things that I wanted to bring up about that Venus, Uranus, it could be codependency issues, dependency or codependency issues. Uh, people who project things on others, are you the projectee or the projector um with venus being in scorpio it also could be issues of trust trust issues betrayal mm-hmm. you know um jealousy yes um but it also could be healing healing breakthroughs through relationships healing in relationships Healing, um, healing old hurts, those old wounds. Yeah. Sudden awakenings in inside relationships. Like, you know, um, oh, I, oh, wow. Uh, I've been seeing this the wrong way this whole time. I got a new perspective and wow, I see uh, X, Y, Z. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Hey, something I once looked at in a negative light in all actuality, it's actually a positive. I was seeing it wrong. Right. Um, This is also the energy of uh, freedom from uh, limitations. Uh, Capricorn is a Saturn rule sign. Capricorn is old guard. Capricorn is old structure and stuff. And so um, it could be freedom, wanting to be free and liberated from all of that. 
yeah escaping escaping the status quo correct correct so um and one other thing that people need to be mindful of especially during this time of year with venus being in opposition to uranus being reckless with your money Ooh, yeah because uranus is going to bring some some shockers and venus is like your things your relationships with people and your relationships with things your material items you know what i meant by that what you wanted to show love to people during this christmas time but when you get that bill in the mail <laughs> it's gonna be a much shocker right oh shit <laughs> Yeah, I spent too much on presents. Man, I went I went into debt for a holiday. I really yeah. don't want to participate. Yeah. A holiday that in some parts you could feel like you're being bullied. Into buying stuff. Into participating. In into buying. consumerism. That kind of matches with, like, the whole, like, Christmas comes from Yule. It's an old pagan holiday. I don't know if we've said that on this take two yet or not. No. (laughs) I know we said it on take one. But, like, it's it's the dying of the sun and preparing for darkness and the cold, harsh winter. And, like, the traditional Yuletide gifts were, like, mittens and scarves and the stockings that we still hang and, like, you know, warmth and you know abundance like we need abundance at this time of year or we're gonna die if 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 your kid doesn't have the latest toy when yeah, they get when they get back to school it's they gotten way teased. far away from just survival like now it's literally just consumerism like yeah these aren't necessities Board games are probably more on the traditional side because you also need something to do in the darkness of the winter. Like, you know, we stay home, we stay by the fire. Like, I'm talking about old times before the electricity, but like games and warm clothes and like stuff for actually prepare for winter were the more traditional gifts. And now it's gotten way away from that. And it's, you know, video games and TVs and VR and not necessary things <laughs> yeah 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 so to be honest with you uh getting back to how we gain uh seems like everything gets sidetracked mm-hmm. and 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 everything uh starts off with as one thing and ends up as a business yeah <laughs> <laughs> Some somebody commoditized it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody got to make a dollar. They capitalized on this idea. <laughs> huh. And even though, even though D, you talk about this pagan ass holiday, you know what you're about to go do? I'm about to go celebrate it. <laughs> Participate in this pagan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this pagan holiday. <laughs> yeah. Now, are you feeling bullied? Uh, I have in the past, but I feel like we've chilled out a lot this year. Like, gone back to, like, the roots of, like, you know, fun clothes for the kids. But, you know, like, functional clothes, but, like, fun stuff that they'll like. And, you know, I don't want to give away any of their... Oh, no. Gifts on air or anything. Wait, wait, wait. How are you going to give it away... Isn't Santa supposed to be bringing it? We do one thing from Santa. <laughs> hmm. Are you doing an elf on the shelf? No, I'm so glad <laughs> I never got into that. Oh my God, those things. Yeah, no my kids do not know who elf on the shelf is. And it's <laughs> <staying> that way. 
But I'll tell you one thing that I think is really cute that my, so my kids are 11 and five. So like maybe we have one more year of the 11 year old believing in Santa, but they're convinced that their grandpa on their dad's side is Santa Claus because he's old. He's the grandpa. (laughs) Mm. He has white beard. He has white hair. He likes tinkering with toys. His specialty is like fixing electronics and making the lights go off and work again. And like, he's an electronics mechanics kind of guy. He has like a toy station where he fixes these, you know, like a desk at his house where he fixes these things. He has like a 3D printer and he has made like the kids like little unicorn figurines and stuff in the past. So they've they've started piecing all of these hints together as like, I think grandpa is Santa Claus and I think he's not telling us. And I think <laughs> it's cute and adorable because like they still like they still think that it started last year. It was adorable. Huh. So I guess, <laughs> I guess Christmas is still cool for you because you you know know, it's weird because like as a kid myself i never believed in santa claus and my dad like i think i've mentioned on the show i figured out that he's on the spectrum and he has asperger's um so he never like he's he just doesn't emote so he never like he never said he existed or didn't. He's just like kind of aloof to it. So I never really believed in it as a kid. And I didn't really care if my kids believed in it. But now that I see the magic in their eyes, I'm fine with it. <laughs> hmm. yeah. yeah. So I know you, you got to roll and do your thing. Um, uh, hey, before you, I want to wish you and your family, you know, uh, Happy holidays and all of that. Thank you. Happy holidays to you and your family too. Glad um, we could get together and record this. Yeah, Second um, time's the charm. <laughs> now, now let me ask you this. When are you going to have another person for me to guess at? Ooh, soon. Whenever you want. I've got like, I've got a few people. I've got a few celebrity charts that we could pull from. Yeah, I kind of enjoy trying to figure out guess who, even though, you know, pick somebody I may know. I mean, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, I knew of Selena. I, I ain't like listened to her music or nothing. I seen the movie once or twice. Yeah. I mean, you know, but <laughs> I just figured, you know, me and me and uh, Claudia were both Latinas and you're from the South. So I figured it was. A safe bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw the movie twice. But, I mean, I would have got the... It, nah, if she would have... La- <laughs> she cheated. <laughs> she cheated. <laughs> we love you, Walter. Shout out to Walter. <laughs> yeah, He's not going to do that again. Uh, yeah. Uh, if, if, if uh, depending on when you want to do it, if we, we could hook up before the uh, end of the year and do that. If not... You know, happy holidays to you and uh, see you next year, if not. Sir. You know, uh, tell the people how to uh, get in touch with you and all of that. Oh, you can find me on uh, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all the usual places. My website's dream-astrology.com for readings and calendars. The new one's not out yet. I'm really, really behind. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> don't judge me <laughs> you, you did mention calendar D how come your calendar doesn't start at the new year in January because it starts on the spring equinox with the first day of Aries and the first day of spring oh, <laughs> oh interesting. the start of the zodiac and the start of the actual new year we could do a whole episode about April Fool's Day and the origins of that because it has to do with when we change the calendar to start in January instead of spring. Mm. All right. Yeah. Well, y'all be looking forward to that and I'll be looking forward to another guess, guess who um, episode. Uh, and uh, I want to thank y'all for rocking with me in 2023. Uh, all the downloads, listening to the uh, horoscopes, the, tarot stuff and all of that uh i'm ready to see what 2024 got to offer 
Yes. So like, look for this again in 2024. Like uh, Buzz Lightyear says, to infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're here to stay. Yeah. Um, 50, wait, how many, what episode did you say this was? Uh, episode 56. Episode 56. Yeah, we yeah, ain't going to be taking our breaks, but we'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. With that being said, uh, I want to thank y'all. Uh, I wish y'all would like, subscribe, share the show with two, three friends. Um, you know how I end this all the time. Know thyself. Balance your energy. I started off with questions. Happy New Year. Two. Things on my mind. Why this? Why that? What should we do? The question that the search is. You dive into the seeking. Go for some hands. Leak it. You think you get the tweaking. Where you don't be getting the preaching. You don't be telling me that my fate is in the stars. You read my energy. You got the recipe to get the ecstasy. I'm shifting gears on the things that you won't believe. One, now people two, don't see. Three. You start some Christmas seed. It's from the start. That's why you trap. You stuck. You can't leave. Man. You best be on your knees. Confess your sins of hope. Don't have no question. Have the faith. You trust. You told the truth. Damn thing.